This is um, digital circuits. And uh, we're in chapter three. But before we can start chapter three, if I could spell chapter three, we'll go back and, and remember what it is that we know. So uh, we know that things are on and things are off. And when things are on, we can call that a one. And when things are off, we can call that a zero. When things are on, we can call that true, if I could spell true. And when things are off, we can call it false. We know that uh, there's a thing called a relay, which is an electromechanical device. And the relay will have contacts that are normally open and contacts that are normally closed. So when the relay is, is on, the normally open contact is closed, and the normally closed contact is open. And when the relay is off, the normally open contact is open, and the normally closed contact is closed. Okay, we know that. We know that there's a thing called a diode. Diode, diode. And current goes that way. So if I'm positive on this side and negative on that side, we say we're forward biased. I need at least 0.7 volts in order to create that condition, and current is flowing. Uh, if I am positive on this side and negative on that side, no current will flow, and we call that negative um, reverse bias. <clears throat> until the voltage is too big and I break it and then I have current flowing again. And then, but once I break the diode, it doesn't get fixed. So I can melt the diode into a mass of nothingness if I put too much voltage across it. And so if I have a 5 volt diode that's supposed to be doing things at 5 volts and I put 500 volts across it, that is a guarantee I'm going to burn it up. And the, the diode is a... Uh, uh, PN junction, and that's all, all it is. Just one, I dope it positively, I dope it negatively with the sands of the ocean, silicone. And if I do, I get a 0.7 drop. If I do it with germanium, then I, I can make dials with a 0.3 voltage drop across them. And then I've got things called transistors. And if, I'm, uh, if I have plus voltage at the base, then I say this guy's on. And if I have negative voltage at the base, I say is off. But I don't use the word on and off. I use the word saturation. Uh, it is uh, the diodes in saturation, meaning it's on or the diodes in cutoff, meaning that it's off. Now this is a digital circuit class. The transistor can do other things too. We don't care about those other things. We just care about being on and off. If I go and, and I have a transistor, and <coughs> I put a resistor there, and I go and I take my voltage out here, and I've got some input voltage at the base, <laughs> then my output is going to be inverted. So when I'm going to be high when I'm low, and I'm going to be low when I'm high. If I have some, and, and we say that this particular circuit is an inverter, an inverter has a symbol that looks like that, and um, it has a truth table.
I have an input A and an output X. A, X, if A is 0, my output's 1. If A is 1, my output's 0. Or I can take that transistor and I can put a resistor on the emitter and take my voltage out there and I can go and put in a signal again and um, my output signal is going to be low when it's low and high when it's high and we call this a buffer and the buffer has a truth table and uh, it's got a symbol so there's the symbol for the buffer and um, input A output X when A is 0, X is 0. When A is 1, X is 1. And then um, we also say, well, we like, we like our 1s and zeros for ons and off, but that may not be convenient, so we may have to write those 1s and zeros in an octal code or a hexadecimal code to make it convenient. So I got, I got 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. 0, 0, 1, 1. Well, that's not very convenient. But if I, I group these guys in, in terms of 3, I can call in a 3 and a 2 and a 4 and a 3, a 4 and a 5. So I could write 5, 4, 3, 4, 2, 3, um, base 8 and uh, have an, an octal representation of the ones and zeros because that's all I care about is the ones and zeros it's either on or off but it may be difficult to, to write that that way or I can go and I can group in, in four at a time and then write this as uh, two Charlie seven one three hexadecimal. So I, I may I may want to transmit the code as a hexadecimal code or a binary code or a binary code or decimal for that matter. So I could do that too. Uh, it may be more convenient to think of the ones and zeros in some base other than binary. And it's definitely more convenient to think of it that way when I'm trying when I'm programming the computer to do something. If I have to program the computer in ones and zeros which is what's happening. This computer, that's all it's doing, is doing a bunch of ones and zeros. But as the operator, I don't want to have to do that. I want to be able to put in something else and tell it to do whatever it is it's doing. That's hexadecimal. Oh, that's base 16. Well, yeah. No, no, it's hexadecimal. I could I could have just as well said two Charlie seven one three, and then I could go subscript sixteen. I could have done that as well. Normally we we wouldn't write five four three four two three zero oh, for octo, because our minds um, don't differentiate very well for, between a zero and a o. Oh. So that's the number zero, and that's the letter O. Our minds don't do well between those two. And so normally we don't write it octal with an O. We write it, we put an eight there, lowercase eight. Okay, so now we're ready to start chapter three. Any questions about one and two? Okay. Yeah, any questions about chapters one and two? Yeah. Other than why was it, why, why didn't you tell me that before? It's too simple, right? Yeah. Back up from your transistors where go at one P in and P in P. So would that change the direction of which ones buffer and invert? Yes, it would. Yeah. Could very well do that. But it probably won't because what would happen is that I'm changing where the positive and the negative is, coming into a PNP and an NPN guy. So the logic's gonna be the same, it but I'm wiring it different. Less, less I'm wiring it. Yeah, I'm wiring, wiring it different. It. Yeah. So on um, these are these are NPN guys. I'm assuming I've got some five plus five volts here. 
But if I was writing the circuit as with PNP guys, then I, I wouldn't have built it that way. I would have built it with I'm grounded here, my five volts are down there. In which case, I would have ended up with the same logic coming out of that guy. It's just it's just different. Okay. All right. Oh, one more thing before we leave this: the inverter can be on a chip, <laughs> and it would have um, 14 pins, dual inline package, also known as a dip. And if I would have made it bigger, I would have a 7 there. Pin 7 is grounded. Pin 14 hooked up to plus 5 volts. Uh, sometimes we call it VCC, voltage at the collector. Um, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8. And I've got inverters sitting there. And this is a 7404 chip. And I've got an inverter sitting here. And I've got an inverter sitting there. And I've got one up here. And this isn't something that you're going to have memorized right away. This is something you're going to go to the front cover of your book to get if you need to get it. So you look at the front cover of your book. 7404, yep, same picture that Cordoba drew. All right, good enough. Did that, did that go in a logic probe? Um, 74 CO4. Yeah, that was a CO4 chip, which is a, 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 a complementary um, CMOS chip. So it's a, it, it, yes, the, that's the logic chip that's being used. No, it wasn't a 7404. It was a 7404C, which is different logic. So this is a, a TTL guy. You had a you put in your know, logic probe has a CMOS guy, and the difference is the voltages that it runs at and the power that it consumes. And uh, but other than that, there's not much of a difference. All right. So now we're in chapter three, and the first thing we get to deal with is an AND gate. So an AND gate has um, a symbol, looks like that. We have an input A, we have an input B, we have an output X. It has a truth table. <clears throat> a, B, X. When A and B are, are false, the output's false. When A is zero and B is, is on, the output zero. When A is on, B is zero, the output zero. When they're both on, they uh, the output is a one. And that's why I call it an, a, an AND gate. They both have to be on in order for the output to be one. Um, I can build this with transistors. So if I make my AND gate big enough, I can put in transistors A, B, and I can put in a transistor there, and I can put in a transistor here, and, um, and go like that. Turn the page so I get it right. And uh, I have a resistor down there, and then my output is connected there. They And I have five volts up here. Now, in order for this not to, and I, I got ground down there. In order for the both of those transistors have to be on in order for the five volts to make it to that point so it could be a five volts out. Um, we don't care what's in the AND gate. The AND gate has um, a hundred transistors in it. Okay, so the manufacturer built it really cool with all kinds of cool stuff in it. We really don't care about that. What we really care about is that it has a truth table and it has a symbol and we get to use it. Now mathematically um, the X is going to be A and B. Now you look at that and you say that doesn't look like A and B to me. That looks like A times B to me, right? Well if it were A times B, which is not, it's A and B by the way, 
um, and I look at a, b, x, and I look at 0, 0. What's 0 times 0? What's 0 times 1? What's 1 times 0? What's 1 times 1? All right, so um, this is a and b, clearly, because that's what we're going to call it. But it sort of looks like multiplication, but um, it's not. Now, I can do uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 inputs if I wanted to, and draw an AND guy. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, X. And X would be A, N, B, N, C, N, D, N, E, N, F, N, G. And guess what would have to happen for this, for X to be true? If I had a truth table, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, X. I got this truth table. And I've got um, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. And I've got uh, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. 0, and I have everybody in between, right? All the guys that I didn't write down are still all going to be 0. And then I got 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. So they'd all have to be 1 in order for it to be a 1. Okay, next thing we got is the, uh, the OR gate. The OR gate has a symbol. Looks like that. I got an A, I got a B, I got an X. My X has a, a mathematical way to write it, and it's going to be A or B. And you're going to say, well, um, that doesn't look like A or B to me. That looks like something else. No, that's A or B. Uh, it has a truth table. And the truth table, um, A, B, X. Uh, zero, zero, I get zero out. <coughs> one, I get a one out. One, zero, I get a one out. One, one, I get a one out. So the OR gate only is only going to give you nothing if there's nothing coming in. Isn't X going to be a one, zero for that bottom one? It's no, no, right because now. it's not, we're not, it's not, it's an OR gate. It's not, a, I'm not adding, it's not addition. It's an OR gate. It's A or B. Yeah, I have days like that. Yeah. So in chapter one, we were adding binary numbers. Chapter three, we're not adding binary numbers. It's an OR gate. If both the inputs are one, then I get a one out. Now, what would be the meaning of a two? How, how, could, I, how could I physically do that? So that means um, the two gives me 10 volts instead of five volts. It's either on or off. Yeah, that's right. It's either on or off. So the output can, I can't, I can't have both a one and a zero here at the same time because there's no, there's not two outputs. Okay. Um, I can go and, and I, again, I can uh, with TTL logic, I can go and and make an OR. See if I can make an OR. So I've got a uh, transistor. I got another transistor. And um, I hook together like that. And now X, 5 volts, AB. And now, no matter which transistor turns on, um, I'm going to get, I need a resistor there too. Brown. Now, I'm gonna, which, if, this, if A turns on, X becomes 5 volts. If B turns on, X becomes 5 volts. If A and B both are on, X becomes 5 volts. If they're both off, then X is 0. And uh, that circuit is on page, and better than what I have, on page 66. Now I can have, um, I can have three of these guys, A, B, C, an OR gate X. X is going to be A, or B, or C. I can have a truth table, A, B, C, X. 
zero 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 one one <coughs> zero one zero one zero one 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 zero zero one one zero one 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 zero one 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 Seems like a pretty boring truth table, but I, I could do that truth so table. So one's open, powerless. That's right. As long as anything is on, I'm going to get a one out of this OR game. I don't have any other possibility. All right. So um, what should we do next? I guess we should do 3-3 three, three next. All right. So I've got some clock pulse. I could spell clock pulse. Got some clock pulse. And um, I'm going to send that clock pulse into an AN. And I have five volts on the other side. And uh, so my clock pulse looks like that. Uh, it'd be better if I had a better clock pulse. So that's all it's going to look like. And then I've got five volts. Going on the other side, all the way across, zero is down here, I'm not there, and I want to know what x is. Well, they both have to be high in order for me to get a one out, right? <coughs> I'm, so I'm low, I'm high, I'm low, I'm high, low, high, low, high, low, high. And uh, these guys line up. They don't look like they're lining up very well. But they do. They line up. All right. So I do it again. I say, well, I've got this OR gate. And i got a clock pulse. And I've got a zero going into the other side. And i got X. Okay, so my clock pulse goes up, goes down, goes up, goes down, goes up, goes down, up and down, up and down. I've got my uh, zero volts sitting there, zero volts, and uh, I look at my X, and I got my X sitting there, uh, zero volts. Nothing's nothing's coming out of this guy. All right, so I do it again, and I say, okay, I got I got an OR. A B X. Well, that's pretty dumb, and I got. Uh, Five volts sitting there, and I got a clock pulse sitting there, and uh, so there's my clock pulse, and there's my five volts, and what's my X going to be? Right there, five volts. It's always going to be because it's always going to be up, because I'm always up. One more time. Got an OR gate, I got zero volts and a clock pulse. My clock pulse goes up, goes down, goes up, goes down. Uh, I got zero volts sitting there. Ooh. And what is my output? X. Well, it's gonna go be it's gonna follow the clock pulse. Well, it's a drunken clock pulse, so what more do you want? And uh, it's going to follow the clock bolts just as if it were just like that. All right, we'll do it again. I got uh, A, I got B, I got C. And I'm going into an AND gate finding X. All right, so A is doing this. And B is doing that. And C is doing this. What is X doing? Well, in order for X to be true, A, B, and C all have to be true at the same time. And so right here, I see A, B, and C are all true at the same time. So I'm going to be high. 
um, I see right here A, B, and C are all true at the same time, so I'm going to be high. Every place else, I'm going to be low. This is an AND gate, right? This is an AND gate. All have to be high in order for it to be, to be high. <clears throat> One more time. One more time. I got an OR gate. A, B, C, X. And I got my A doing this. And I got my B doing this. And I got my C doing this. And I say, well, what is X going to be? Well, X is going to be high whenever anybody's high. So I'm going to be high there. I'm be high there. Be high there. 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 There and here. Maybe. If that comes out like that. And then I'm going to be low every place else. So I'm low, I'm high. I'm low, I'm high. Low, high, low, high. Low, high. Seems like my floating ground is floating too high. All right. So that's what my output's going to look like. It's going to be, I'm going to be, I'm only going to be high when somebody's high. Okay. Or if it's an AND gate, I'm only going to be high when everybody's high. All right, so we have pages of timing things. And then we ask ourselves, well, if I have an AND gate, the symbol looks like that, but am I going to build it from scratch every time I want to use it? And the answer is no. I look in the front of my cover of the book and I see that the AND gate is sitting on a 7408 chip. <coughs> 7408. Hmm? On the front cover of the book. No, but I mean like. See, the 7408 has AND symbols on it. Isn't that cool? But um, we're on page 72, right? I'm on page 73 where the 7408 chip is, but okay. yeah. So I got uh, the 7408 chip, and I got pin 1 and 2 and 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. 7 is connected to ground. Do you see a pattern yet? And uh, as 14, it's connected to VCC. And uh, 13, 12. Well, the are connected to 14, 14 then? Well, so far, okay. yeah. Real bummer, huh, that they actually did something cool like that. Not all of them forever, but for the first few that are simple, yes. Uh, all right, so now I got it. My AND gate is sitting there, and so I got two guys coming in, and I'm going out three. I got two guys coming in. I'm going out six. I have two guys coming in. I'm going out eleven. Two guys coming in. Going out eight. And um, again, I'm not, I don't have to memorize that chip. It's in the front cover of my book. But you're gonna, you can look at the front cover of your book all you want. And uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm yeah going in. So this is this is A, B, X. Input, input, output. In, in, 
out. I can't go the other way. It's not going to let me go the other way. And then uh, I look at the front cover of my book, and I see we have this ore guy, 7432. Is that the ore guy? Yeah, that's what I was looking at. It's yeah. Just... Yeah, 7432. The connection from 4, 5, and 6 is slightly modified. No, same. So I got pin 1, pin 2, pin 3, input, input, or gate, out. A, B, X. 4, 5, 6, Input, input, or gate, out, and pin seven goes to ground. All right. Hmm? Pin seven goes to ground. Oh. Yeah. The chip has to have power. So it's got to have five volts coming to it. So pin 14 is hooked up to five volts, and pin seven is hooked up to ground. If it's not, none of the chips are going to work. Yeah. What if that just fourteen to thirteen and seven to six? I don't see anything. They seem to be just blank. They're somehow attached, aren't they? I'm assuming power's coming in. It's got to get to these amps and ores. Yeah, the thousand resistors, transistors, and diodes that are sitting on that chip are not being represented by the picture. Yes, I agree. So these are these are. Or gates sitting on an integrated circuit guy, but I'm certainly not going to be able to draw the thousand parts that are there. I'm only drawing it that it's an OR gate. 13, 12, 11. Input, input, OR gate, 11. 10, 9, 8, pin numbers. Or gate out eight. Okay, but I, I'm not telling you how the circuit works inside. I'm just telling you that it is an OR gate and it's going to work. Okay, because you don't have time to make the OR gate from scratch. You can do that, but you're not going to want to. The, these things are uh, 15 cents a piece. <laughs> You know, and so if you're, you're going to take three or four dollars worth of parts to make an OR gate, no, I don't think so. It's not going to work that way. All right, now we get to the issue of your um, your logic probe. Anybody got a logic probe that works yet? Two, three. What's wrong with you guys? Didn't you know you're supposed to make it so it doesn't work? You guys blew it. Anyway, the uh, it, on page 75, it says that uh, if my logic level is high, my indicating light comes on. But you guys get two indicating lights, right? A red one and a green one. Mm -hmm. So obviously it's going to do something different than that. If it's low, it's going to be off. If it's floating, it's going to be dim. Now, um, how many times have I used the word float so far during my lecture? Three. Twice. <laughs> All right. So um, that's a new word. What the heck does that mean? All right. Well, I got uh, got this gate here. Here's an OR gate. I have a one here, and I've got a zero there. What do I have out? Zero. Zero. Okay. Here's an OR gate. I've got a one there but I haven't connected anything to the other guy. So it's floating because I don't have it connected. What's my output? One. The, on a TTL logic, a non-connected input will float high. It'll charge up and float high. So if you want, if you want a zero on one of the, on one of the inputs of TTL logic, you must ground it to have the zero. Okay. You can't not hook it up. If you do, it will float high, and that'll do something that you don't want it to do. So that's that's the, what the word float means. 
Uh, float means it's the indicator light's going to be dim. You also have a pulse thing on yours that the light will flash as a pulsing thing uh, if it's working right. So if you have a, a uh, clock pulse going in, it'll show not a solid one or a solid zero, but it'll show pulse. Okay, uh, now we're all the way up to the inverter. Wait a minute, we already did the inverter. That's right. B E inver B -E. anyway inver. Um, input A output X. Tooth table zero zero, uh, <coughs> zero one one zero. Now, um, let's talk about. Um, we have a thing called fan out. Fan out. And we have a thing, um, and we have a maximum uh, current. So um, I, got, I got this T, I had this AND gate here, and I have it connected to one, two, three, or five other and five other inverters over here for whatever reason. Um, do I expect them to work? Yeah, I wouldn't have hooked them up if I didn't expect them to work. Normal TTL logic can allow ten TTL things to be hooked up to the output. Okay, and that's called fan out. I can have I only have one, two, three, four, five. If I put 11 there, I wouldn't expect it to work. It doesn't have enough current oomph to make that many work. All right, so now I've got this, um, this uh, inverter guy, and I've got this uh, light emitting diode guy. I got uh, A over here, and I got uh, X there. And um, I'm going to ground this guy on this side. All right, so my truth table says A is 0, I get a 1 out. And uh, B is 1, I get a 0 out. And I ask myself my LED. So is my LED on because X is 1, or is it on because X is 0? Probably on the left hand side, so it would be off. It would be a zero. So the LED is off when it's zero? No, when the A is zero. Oh, okay. It'll be, yeah, it'll be off when the X is zero and on when the A is zero. All right, so the front row says the LED is, is off in this condition and the LED is on in that condition. Anybody disagree with the front row? Uh, what? Uh, the answer, the right answer is in both cases, the LED is going to be off. And the LED is going to be off because the LED needs uh, somewhere between 10 and 15 milliamps to turn on, and that, um, that inverter is only going to put out somewhere less than 5, less than 5 milliamps. So the LED will not be on, there won't be enough current to get the 0.7 voltage drop, and therefore it ain't going to be on. But I can do something weird. Well, it's not that weird because I'm going to do it all the time. I can take that inverter like this, and I can hook up my LED like this. And uh, light emitting out diode. And um, now, uh, I've got A, I've got X. Okay, so I got A, I got X, 0 is 1. Okay, when I'm at 5 volts at 1, there's no current flowing, so the LED is off. 1, 0. When I'm 0 here, 
I have five volts going to ground, the TTL logic can sync 15 amps easily, and so the LED is now on. So I used the, the inverted logic to sync the current and turn on the LED. So I, I, the, the LED, the inverter, TTL logic can't provide enough current to turn on the LED, but he can sync enough current to have the LED come on. So when he's acting as a ground, that he can, he can pass a whole lot of current to ground, but when he's trying to provide current, he can't do that. But so it's a fake ground, then? No, it's not a fake ground. It's a real ground. Well, what's it going out through? Like, you go to a ground, does that dissipate something? Well, as you recall, on the chip, there's a ground. Pin 7's oh, grounded, oh, right? Oh, this is happening in the chip. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So it's, you know, there's the ground sitting there on the chip. So you're going to be doing this in your digital circuit lab class. You're going to be building circuits that, that turn on the LED by having the current go the other way. Okay. So current, in order for the LED to come on, the current has to flow that way. Okay. You're also going to do, you're going to make circuits so that you don't float an input. So what does a circuit look like so you don't float an input? Well, if I go 5 volts and I go through a 10K resistor and um, I go to my uh, TTL logic guy here and uh, on the other side I have a, a switch. And I go to ground. We won't. I won't put a any resistor there. I'll just go to ground. So now when the switch is open, I see five volts, and I have a one. When the switch is closed, I see zero volts. Now, why would I want a 10k resistor there? Well, to limit the amount of current I'm throwing away, right? If I have 50 million of these guys all in the off position. And I have a whole lot of current going to ground, and that wouldn't be pretty cool. So I'd, I want to have a bigger resistor there to limit the amount of current going to ground. So it's acting as a load resistor then? Hmm? It's acting as a current resistor. limiting resistor is what you would call it, yes. A load resistor would be something at the other, at the other end here, so that's my load. Oh. Um, but I don't have that. So that's how I, pr that's how I don't float the input. The switch closes, I'm at zero. The switch opens, I'm at one. Okay. Any questions so far? All right. Moving on. Um, let's think. Trying to figure out whether or not you can handle it, you know. Okay, Bowie so. If I have an AND gate and I were to put an inverter at the other end, so I got an AND here, and I got an inverter there, and I put it all in the same place like that. If I were to do that, what would I want to call it? Yeah. And I call it a NAN. So this is a NAN gate. It's a it's an AN with an inverter added on the on the end. It's got a truth table. A B X. When they're both zero, I'm at zero, which gives me a one. When one of them is one and the other one's zero, it's at zero, which gives me a one. When one is zero, the other one's zero, I get a one. When they're both one, I get a zero. So I've inverted my AN. My AN would have been zero, 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 one. A NAN is one, one, zero. All right. So why do I care about NANs? Why is it that the 7400 chip is a NAND chip. 
Why did the first guy get called a NAND chip for? Why isn't that an inverter? Anyway, I have about 5,000 of these chips in, my, in the lab right now that are just sitting around waiting for you guys to use. Um, so I've got uh, pin 14, goes to power, pin 7, goes to ground, and um, pin 1 and 2 and 3 have a NAND. <coughs> Well, the reason that the, uh, Na the NAND chip was honored with the... Now, you have to remember that all these things in logic that we're doing with TTL, transistor to transistor logic, were all done for 50 years before we had the first transistor using vacuum tubes. So we already knew there was a NAND gate in vacuum tubes before we made one in transistors. So when it was time to honor the most important one with the first number, 7400, we already knew which, was, which one was the most important, and that's why we made it that way. So, so you know, it wasn't that we, oh, just this might be important, we'll give it the first one. No, we already knew that for the last 50 years as we were dealing with vacuum tubes. So uh, the, the NAND chip, turns out to be a universal chip, universal. Um, so if I, if I have a NAND chip and I make uh, both the guys hooked together, what do I have? A, X, zero. If it's a zero, I have zero on both. I get a one. If I have one on both, I get a zero. I got an inverter. So I don't have to make inverter chips. I can just make NAND chips and use them as inverters. Okay. Um, I've got a NAND chip, A, B, and then I hook up another NAND chip as an inverter, and now I've got an AND. So two NANDs, I can hook them together, and I can make an AND. So I don't need any ands anymore. I just need nands, and I'm all set. Now this is gonna this is gonna blow your mind a little bit, uh, but if I go and I take two nands and I turn them into inverters, and then I send it to another nand, what I've just made is an or. So NANDs can be NORs, NAND can be ORs, NANDs can be ANDs, and they can be inverters. And I don't need any of those other chips. I can do all my logic in NAND-only logic. And in fact, back in the, in the days when we had 8080 processors, those processors were just NANDs. They did it with NANDs only because they could. It can be done. And, and, um, and that's why I have so many of these guys. Now, you're going to say, well, <clears throat> yeah, yeah, I don't believe that. That's garbage, right? right? So an A0 and a B0 would produce a 1. So an A0 and a B0 produces a 1 here and a 1 there. A 1 here and a 1 there produces a 0 there. Oh, That's right. And if I had if I had an A that was a one and a B that was a zero, then that one would become a one, the zero, the one would become a zero. One would become a zero, the zero would become a one, the one zero would become a zero. No, it would become a one. Become a one. If I had a, a 1 and a 1, the 1 would become a 0, the 1 would become a 0, the two zeros would become a 1, and now I just showed you that it's an OR gate. Okay? Now, going on the same premise of, of we're going to blow our minds, right? We're going to come up in multi-sim for a moment. And, uh, and, um, 
And this is where I should have the picture a little bit bigger. So I'm going to have to remember where my green flashing lights are. So I make sure I keep this inside. 99% should be done by now, right? Um, over here on the left, which you can't see except if you're in the class, you have a thing called a um, logic converter. So I'm going to bring out my logic converter. And um, I'm going to put in some logic. Okay, so I'm just, I'm just going to do that. I'm going to have A, B, C. Okay, so that's an AND gate, A, B, C. I'm going to take it and turn it into a truth table. So there's a truth table, A, B, C. I'm going to draw it as, uh, I'm going to take it and draw it as a bunch of uh, circuits here. So here's my A, B, C going into my ANDs. And then I'm going to do the same thing, and I'm going to draw it as a group of, using NANDs only. Where'd my NAN only go? Oh, there it is. My NAN. So now I drew it using NANDs only. Okay, so I, I just did that. So I, I'm going to do it again. Maybe. Yeah, I'll do it again. We'll go A, B, C, or, where's the or? Or, A, or, C. Okay, so we got A, B, C, or A or C. Uh, we come up with a truth table. There's our truth table. We draw a circuit using uh, regular TTL logic, and it looks like that. And then we do it again using NANDs only. And uh, there's the NAND only guy. So all I got is, you know, I just, pre I'm only using NANDs. Yeah, so that uh, it's just it's just uh, life is just that way. You thought life was simple, and then you decided to be an electronics person. And I'm telling you that life is simple. Ninety percent of the time, all we're going to do is turn on the power and walk away, and we're going to be heroes. Right there. So uh, you've got zeros, zeros in your inputs there that would make ones there. That would make ones there. And why does that make a zero? If this is a this is a one and one, and the and would make it a one, but it's a nan, it's inverted, so it's a zero, right? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, isn't that cool? But it can be done. And it doesn't matter how, the, the logic converter really doesn't care how difficult it is either. It can go and do all kinds of cool things. It's make it more interesting for sure. Yeah. Um, now we get to do the same thing again. And we're going to look at um, what if I have an OR and I add an inverter on. So I got a thing here, and I, I'm going to call it a NOR. It's going to have a truth table. So if they're both 0, I have a 0, which becomes a 1. If one of them is 1, I have a 1, which becomes a 0. If the other one's a 1, I got a 1 that becomes a 0. If the other, if they're both one, then I have a one that becomes a zero. So now that's the truth table for my my nor. Now, if it goes through the invert and it's an or, we can either one, wouldn't one of them with at least one input and one output? Wouldn't it be one? All right. So one and one, one and one gives me a one. It goes through the inverter. I get a zero. No, but one and zero. I got a 1 and a 0. I go through the OR, I get a 1, which gives me a 0. It's inverted. I've got a 0, I've got a 0 and a 0, which gives me a 0. The 0 gets inverted and becomes a 1. 
Right. And of course, the nor is also a universal chip. Why not? Okay, so if I got uh, a nor and I uh, bring both guys in as A, then it becomes an inverter. If I have um, a nor and I put it through another nor, then it becomes an or. If I have use it as an inverter coming in on both sides of another nor, then I have an and. All right, so if I have a one coming in, they're both ones, I get a one, which gives me a zero out. Um, I put a zero in, I get a zero out, which is inverted to a one. Okay, I've got a zero and a zero, gives me a zero, gets inverted to a one, gets inverted back to a zero. I've got a one, I got a zero, that gives me a one, which is inverted to a zero, the inverted to the zero gives me a one. I got a, a one and a one, which is a one inverted to a zero, my zero becomes a one. Okay. Look down here. Zero, zero. Zero becomes a one. Two ones become a zero. I got one, zero. This guy becomes a zero. That guy becomes a one. This guy becomes a one, which becomes a zero. I have a question. Yeah. What are these used in? You what have, you have a cell phone? How do you think your cell phone works? Oh, like, what's by, like, what's by, by fucking magic? Is that what it is? <laughs> that's, what, that's what they think over there. Yeah, how, what, your cell phone works because logic gates work. Now, why do you, the, your, your, your um, Pentium 4 dual core processor, what do you think it is? It's just a bunch of logic gates. Yeah, I'm just trying to understand, like, why would you invert the zeros back to zeros? Why not? You're doing it all the time. <laughs> you know? well, do you? Do you? Do you, you <laughs> yeah. Zeros. Let's say let's say I have a bank account and it has a hundred thousand dollars in it. You know, someday it's going to have zero, right? Because I'm going to take it all out. You know, all it is is ones and zeros. That's all it is. Yeah. I'm just trying to understand why you want to turn zero into zero. Yeah. See the light? See the light? You want to turn it off? It's already on. This one? That one's already on? Yeah. You sure? Yeah. How about that one? Is that already on? That's on. So you that's want one that? And that's zero. Yeah, you want this guy to be off sometime? Eventually. Well, that's what, of course. <laughs> so you, you want something to be able to turn it off with, right? Yeah. You'd sort of like that to be your will. I will the light to be off. Oh, it's off. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. I just had my eyes closed. Uh, you know, the, uh, so yeah. So in a digital circuit class, what we do is we go back to the fundamentals of how that digital circuit works. How does that Android machine work? Well, it didn't work because somebody made it from scratch. It was built on top of 50 years of other people building circuits. Okay. It wasn't because some engineer sat down and said, oh, well, this would be cool to do it this way. No, uh-uh. No. We don't have Pentium 4 dual-core, quad-core processors. We couldn't have gotten there if we didn't have a 286, if we didn't have an 8088. You know, if we, we, we had to go all the way back in order to get our engineering to the point where we can get to where you can pick up your cell phone and send a text to somebody and and have Homeland Security knock on your door tonight and tell you you're a terrorist, you know, because they're monitoring you. All the, huh? Yeah, I mean, all, that all has to do with, with ones and zeros, right? But so. I, I think you mean, like, would you just use a normal AND gate here instead of three inverted OR gates? Well, yeah. Okay. But you, you could. <laughs> well, why is this makes it more complicated if you could just use an AND gate? Maybe. 
Yeah. yeah. Just go buy an end game. Just go buy an end game. Okay, so here, here we go. Uh, 74 uh, 08. 15 cents a piece. 74 32s. 15 cents a piece. 74 hundreds. One cent a piece. You get the you get you get you get get the picture uh, now. So yeah. if I if I have some application I'm doing, and I can do it with ands and ors and inverters, right? And and I got a hundred thousand chips sitting there, and I can do it for five hundred dollars, or I could do it with just a universal chip only, and I could do it for uh, one hundred and fifty dollars. It's a matter of money. That's exactly what it is. It's a matter of money. Okay, so, so if I'm gonna, if I want you, the manufacturer, to build me a hundred million nans, the price comes down. If Why I want is the inverter cheaper, it seems like it's doing more work. Because I'm making more of them. It's cheaper by the dozen. So, if if I can if I can do it and, and have lots of them. Then it's cheaper. So if you look at the the uh, the 286 motherboards, they've got a uh, hundred different chips on them, but most of those chips are the same chip. They're just the they're, they're universal logic chips being used to do the logic that's required. So Today we don't do that. You look at your motherboard. What do you got? You got you got two chips. You, know? you got the CPU and you got some communication chip. And that's about all you got, because we went and put it all on the in the same package in the same thing. Mm -hmm. So now it's a matter of. Um, of course, the more money you spend, the more complicated it gets. Though, that's right? right. So now it's a matter of when I'm doing the the masking of the of the chip and putting the components on the the chip itself. Is it cheaper to do the same thing over and over and over again, or is it cheaper to change the design? A little bit. Well, in an architectural thing, it's easier to do it over and over and over again. So it's cheaper to build this building with 23 classrooms that are about the same size than it would be to build this building with a classroom with 300 people in it and another one with 15 and another one with 20. It, that'd be more expensive to do it in, in multiple sizes. Yeah. But you, you know, you could have the idea of. of uh, uh, why do I care about this? My phone works fine, right? So I, I you know, so I got my phone and it flips open, and uh, I can't get on the internet with it, but it, it'll tell me I got a message, so I could listen to it if I wanted to. Anybody want to carry that phone? You no, know, fits in my pocket quite well. Uh, so as things get more complicated, then things will get more complicated, but. The same principle applies. If if I'm only going to sell one iPhone six, it's going to cost a hundred million dollars. But if I'm going to sell a thousand, a hundred thousand, a hundred million of them, I can sell them for a couple hundred dollars a piece. But to make it, to make the first one's going to take a lot of time and effort and money. All right. Well, there's the NOR gate. I guess we can do some homework problems, and then we'll uh, call it a day. I have no clue. Absolutely none. Uh, page 97. Now I have a clue. We still have another day to do chapter 3, too, so that's great. Remember, Monday is a holiday next week. If you come in and you have a, uh, a good parking spot, you know why. All right, so we're going to look at problem number three, two. Um, the other part of that issue is, um, can, you, can you add two plus two? Four, you can do that, okay. Can you take the integral of two x uh, dx from one to two? We haven't done yet. Okay, so 
So there is some math you haven't done yet, right? But in order to be able to do this math, you need to do that math first, right? You can't do that math until you can do this math. It's one of those things. So when it comes to digital equipment stuff, we have to start at very simple things first, the two plus two things first, so we can get to the end of the book where we're doing more difficult things. <coughs> okay, does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <coughs> if you were to build a truth table, so we're doing we're doing 32, three 3-2. If you were to build a truth table for a eight input AND gate, how many different combinations of inputs would you have? Okay, so I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of them. Okay, so I got eight inputs. They go from zero, 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 all the way to one, 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 right? One, 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 one. Yeah, exactly. Two to the eighth power, which is 256. Is it not? Two raised to the eighth power, 256. Now, because I need the zero and I need 1111111, which is 255, it's 255. Plus, I have another one for the zero. That's why I got to 256. So I need 256 different, in my truth table, 256 different lines to get to the point where everything is one and I get a one out. All the other 255 inputs are going to be zero. Yeah, two choices, eight times. Yeah, two choices, eight times, exactly. All right, well, that was... Yeah. Now we're looking at <coughs> three six. Uh, sketch the output waveform X. Sketch the outform waveform X. Yeah. Three six. Oh, three six. Determine the logic at levels W X Y Z. I have one zero going into an OR means the W is a one. Zero, zero, one going into an OR means Y is a one. Uh, zero, zero going into an OR means X is a zero. One, one, one going into an OR means Z is one. Well, that was okay. They should all be that easy. Three, seven. Sketch the output waveform. So I got an A, I got a B, I've got an X, and I've got an AND gate. And my A signal starts low, goes high, goes low, goes high, goes low again. And uh, I'll draw some some construction lines, so I'm uh, can have my act relatively together. Uh, and then I got a B. My B does an up and down, crosses the line, does an up and down, crosses the line, does an up and down. Crosses the line, does an up and down. Crosses the line, does an up and down. What color do I want to use? Green, uh, X. So my, I'm going to be 
at zero until they're both high. Up, down. Zero until they're both high. Up, down. Zero the rest of the way. Okay, good enough. Get to do it again. So I have a uh, the same AND gate. I got uh, ABX and my A uh, goes up, goes down, goes up, goes down. I have con some cons construction marks to protect the innocent or the guilty, depending on how you look at it. Could be either way. And then I've got my B signal. It starts there, goes up, goes down, goes up, goes down. I've got my X. My X starts low, goes up when they're both high, goes down low, goes up, still goes. That's called a glitch right there, by the way. And then they both go high. And then we do that, and then we use the eraser and get rid of the glitch. Oh, there we go. No more glitch. A glitch is a temporary, L-I-C-H, is a temporary wrong answer uh, due to some transient condition that happened. So we have a transient condition happening. I went from 0 to 1. And my signal glitched on me. It's not. It's only a couple of nanoseconds long, but it might be long enough to mess with my brain. But we'll take it away because we don't have to deal with it right now. Okay. Questions about that? Yes. How do I know it? Yeah. Well, because this is an AND gate, and the AND gate has a truth table. A B, X. Zero, zero, zero. Zero, one, zero. One, zero, one, zero. One, one, one. And in that truth table, the only time I get a one is if everything is one. So I, right here, A is zero. Still at zero. Here, A and B both at one, I go up. Here, A and B both at one, I go up. That's how I do that. So I remember what it is that my the truth table looks like for the circuit I have, and then I use that. Three seven. So I got. Um, I just did three seven. So I'm doing three eleven. Which requires me to turn the page. Bummer. Gotta turn the page. Repeat three ten for the two input NANDs on the signals below. Okay. All right. So now I've got an A and a B, and I got an AN X. Now I've got an OR. Got an OR. Boom, boom, boom. An OR and an X. The truth table for the OR, A, B, X. 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 1, 1. All right. I know the A waveform. A waveform goes high, goes low, goes high, goes low. I don't know the B waveform. Don't know what it is. Why would I not know what it is? I have no idea what I do. But I do know the X waveform. The X waveform starts high. And then it goes low, and then goes high, and then stays high until there, and then it goes low again. 
And now I am supposed to come up with what is the B waveform. Yeah, it starts out high. So if it starts out high, the B waveform must start high. When they're both low, the B waveform has to be low. Now, now between there and there, and we'll go back and talk about that later, but between here and here, I have to be high. Okay, so we'll come back here. We'll take that out, but between there and there, I have to be high. And then at the end, I have to be low again. Okay, so I know my B waveform starts high, goes low, is high there, and is low here. But I don't know what it is here, so this is unknown. It can be either high or low. I have no idea what it is. And I'd, I'd have to I'd have to mark it as an unknown through there because I don't know what it is. It could be either way. It could be high or low. So I will be true. So I don't know in that particular point in the time. I don't know if the nuclear weapon's going to blow up or not. Um, you got to put it through the whole thing. Is that what you got to do? <laughs> I guess. You have, to, you have to give it to Iran and let them figure it out. <coughs> okay. I'll do it again. See if this is any more clear the second time. All right. So I've got uh, AVX and I've got an OR. And my A signal is nice and behaved. It goes up, it goes down, goes up, it goes down. Nice and behaved. The B signal, I don't know what it is. The X is uh, doing something. I don't know. Okay, so the X is doing something there. And then uh, it comes way over here and does something. And it goes way over there and does something. All right, so that's what it, uh, that's what the X symbol, X guy is doing. So what is the B guy doing? Well, the B guy has to be high, and then he's going to have to go low. And then he's going to have to go high again until there. At that point, we don't know what he's doing. But at this point, we know he's high again, and he went low. And at this point, we don't know what he's doing. But at that point, we know he went high again. No, he went low. At this point here, he had to go low. And then he had to go high again. So um, I don't know, can't tell you what he did there, and I can't tell you what he did there. Um, I can tell you he's either high or low. It doesn't matter. Yeah. So if it's a one, <coughs> a one will give me that same. Will give me a one. Or he could be a zero. Several chance. Okay. There are several. Yeah. Like three different options. Yeah, so I can't really tell what he's doing there. Um, I do know, though, that uh, mm -hmm. right here, I have to go that way, right? Okay, so I have to do that. But I don't. I just don't know. Uh, I don't know what it is there. So how come is an it's not high because A's high? Well, yeah, yeah, A, yeah, A's high. And that's why, and so it's high because A is high. I agree, but I don't know what B is. Is B high or is B low? In other words, it can be like a one one, a one zero, or a zero one. That's right. All of them are one. Yeah, exactly. So it could be that it's high, and <coughs> well, that would give you the right answer. But it also could be 
that the signal looks like this. I can have a, I have a change the color. What color do I want? Oh, there we go. That's good. It could be the signal is like like that. So. In there. I don't know. I don't know what the signal is there. The reason why B is I is because X is high. Um, yeah, B, B X is the output. So X is high. In that interval, A is high, so X is going to be high. B could be doing anything. I don't know what it's doing. That's why I'm saying it's unknown. Okay, did we do half the homework yet? Three eighteen. Are we going to do 318? Um, yeah, I think so. I think we'll do 318. In theory, we can hang out for another 25 minutes if we wanted to. But, you know, pretty soon I'm going to run out of material in Chapter 3. And uh, maybe, uh, so we'll do 318. Um, what are the three logic levels that can be indicated by a logic probe? Low, high, floating. Yeah, that's the dim one. Uh, except yours, because your logic probe, if done right, will also do a pulse. But the logic probe that the book is talking about is the one that's in the chapter, which doesn't do pulsing. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, I'm sure that uh, yeah, that's the case. Yeah. All right. Um, three dash nineteen must be must be pretty simple. Three dash nineteen. Uh, what is the function of the logic pulser? Now again, your logic probe doesn't have a logic pulser. Your logic probe will will um, see a pulse, but uh, if you pay a mere $25 for a logic probe, it has a logic pulser form, and what it does is it goes and puts a signal someplace. So it would go, and there's my logic probe, and it would put a pulsing signal on that guy. So it puts it into it. Yeah, it would put. Probe. Yeah, it would from the probe. The probe would put the signal on the circuit. Um, you, you guys, uh, your thing's only ten bucks, and it's not going to do that. So don't worry about it. But uh, that's what a logic pulser does. All right. One more. Three twenty-two. I don't know. Three twenty-two. All right, maybe we'll do three twenty-two. Three twenty-two. The uh, clock enable circuit shown below is not working. The uh, enable switch is up. Okay, so we're in the enable position. A logic probe will be placed in the following pins and get the following results. Find the cause of the problem. Okay, so we look at pin one and we see that it's flashing. Is that okay? Okay, yeah. yes. There's so supposed to be a clock else. there. There's supposed to be a clock there and I'm seeing a pulsing clock. Perfectly okay. I look at pin two, look at pin two, and I see that it's on. Is that okay? Perfectly okay. Pin two is a one coming from the enable pin. That should be there. Pin three, pin three is off. Is that okay? No, good. You're right. So I should, the same pulsing that I saw at pin one, I should be seeing at pin three. It's an AND gate, I should be seeing the same thing. Pin seven. How do you know it's off? 
it tells me it's off in the book. That's part of the problem. Yeah, part of the problem tells me that. All right. Now we're going to look at pin seven. Pin seven is off. Is that okay? No. That's right. That's okay because that's a, that's a ground pin. And pin 14 is on. Is that okay? Yes, because that's power and it's supposed to be at five volts. So the problem is right there. The problem is with the AND gate. It's not working right. So if you're lucky, your TTL chip is put into a chip holder and not soldered into your board. Okay, And if it is, then you can just pull the chip out of the chip holder, get another uh, 7408 chip and put it in the chip holder and you're all set. Now, if you have um, 14 pins soldered into your board, then you're going to have to heat up each of those soldering things one at a time, suck the solder away until you, yeah, what a pain sucks. in the rear end. So, so um, what do you do? You just, you just like solder 7, 14, or 1, and 8 and call it good? Like, well, there's probably other things being used on the chip. So like if you were to solder this on, you don't really want to solder it all pins. But you would, because you're not soldering it. A mask is putting on, it's being sent to an infrared oven, and all 3,000 uh, solder joints are uniformly heated up and, and flow at the same rate and are good solder things. So little old ladies in tennis shoes are not doing it anymore. Okay, But if you want to repair it, it's best that it's in a chip holder. <laughs> all right. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> I actually understood something.